I became a great friends with Lanny Poffo. So here's a Macho Man story for you. Uh, I was doing these shows in the Midwest run by a man named Ed Schumann. And Ed Schumann, when I did his shows, he kept claiming to me, I know the Macho Man. And he's like, I know him. And I told him about you. And here's his number. He wants you to give him a call. So I go, oh, man, that'd be great. So when I got home, you know, wrestling ribs were a big thing. So I thought I'm going to call this number. Somebody on the other line is going to do a Macho Man. I can't be the only one who can do Macho Man. (laughs) So I never called it. I ended up doing Ed Schumann's show maybe five, six times after that. And every time I would go, he would say, Macho Man said that you never called him. Like, I gave you his number. Call him. I go, yeah, yeah. I get home, didn't call him. So then, like, the fourth time, I go, okay, let me just call him so that Ed Schumann can stop hassling me and I can get this rib over with. They can laugh at me. So I call the number and I explain, you know, Ed Schumann gave me your number. And the guy on the other line kept going, <clears throat> he kept going, is that right? And I go, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of yours. Is that right? Uh, yeah. And uh, I've been doing this thing on TV. I don't watch much TV, but uh, Ed showed me on YouTube. Uh, it's pretty good. And I go, yeah, I'm a huge fan of yours. And it's like, this is an honor. Is that right? Well, uh, me and my girl are about to go to uh, get something to eat. I got to talk to you later. And I go, okay. And that was like, so when I do the next Ed Schumann show, I go, okay. I talked to him. He goes, what, what did he say? I go, I felt like I was bothering him. I'm waiting for like, ah, ha, ha, we got you. Yeah. And that was it. He never said anything ever again about it. So then like three years later, I meet Lanny Poffo. Someone books me versus Lanny Poffo on a wrestling show. Um, and uh, he's such a cool guy. And at the end of the day, after I wrestled him, I pull him aside. I go, can I ask you something? He goes, yeah. I said, do you know a man named Ed Schumann? He goes, oh, that's Ed Schumann. And as soon as he said that, my heart started pounding so hard. Like, oh, my God. I just, I said, okay, well, Ed Schumann gave me the number to Macho Man. I don't have it anymore. Um, but can you find out if that was really him that I talked to? He goes, yeah, as soon as I get home, I'll, I'll uh, give me your number. I gave him my number. I he gave, said, give me your email too. Gave my email. The next day, I had an email from Lanny Poffel. Said, yeah, I just talked to my brother. He said, he, he talked to you once. He said, you only called him once. He said, he gave Ed Schumann uh, the number to give to you and you only called him once. And I wanted to cry. I wanted to cry. I found the number and I called him three more times. But every time the conversation was like, 10 seconds because he he couldn't talk I, he was busy doing and i was so mad you have no idea oh. so, like i just didn't believe that it was him otherwise i would have asked man and then he passed away and you have no idea i man it was all because of people in the wrestling business they play so many ribs and I just thought I was protecting myself against like being made of fun of. Yeah. There's no way to describe Chris, how the, the feeling that I felt when I realized it was him three times I tried to call and he was too busy to talk, but like I let that opportunity slip through my fingers because I thought it was someone playing a joke on me. It was well, if anybody's going to do any sort of impression for a rib. It's, Hulk Hogan or Macho Man. So I completely can understand why you might think that someone was pulling a fast one on you. Yeah, yeah, but it, it man, when when I said the name Ed Schumann to Lanny and yeah. he right away goes, oh, before he finished saying, right then and there, I just felt awful that I didn't believe and I should have believed him. And here's the thing, Ed Schumann, he passed away too. He was a great guy, never played a trick on me. He was always so nice to me. He booked me on his shows at a point where I was having this imposter syndrome. Like he was like, there was no reason not to believe him. (laughs) But I didn't believe him. What do you wish you could have asked Macho Man that you didn't ask? Oh man, there were so many things 
so I enjoyed most of his heel stuff as opposed to his good guy stuff. Yeah. So I would have picked his brain. I wanted to become better at wrestling. What advice do you have? I would have, there was one thing that I tried to do is I would have wanted him to hear me plan a match and tell me what was good about it. No, don't do this. Why do you do it mm. like this? Well, and like, because the way his matches came out to me were all when he was a bad guy was so incredible. Like him, there's two people where I watch their matches and I think they're geniuses, him and the others, triple H, like they don't have bad matches the way it's from a wrestler's standpoint, the way it's what we call structured and the way it plans out. It's always to me flawless. Um, so that would have been the main thing I would have asked him. Can you hear me plan this match? And can you tell me what I shouldn't do and what I should like, man. And then I would have asked him all the fan questions. What was it like working with sensational Sherry? I was a big fan of sensational Sherry. I thought she was beautiful. One of my favorite moments uh, was when she interviewed. Was she, there was a storyline where if Warrior won the belt, Savage wanted a title shot. So he sent sensational Sherry to ask her, if, if you win, can you give Macho Man? Man, there was so many. Like, oh, man, this was my childhood. And Bad Guy Savage, there was one thing that I would was super impressed at, and I tried to do incorporate little things like that when I was a bad guy. So he would make Elizabeth stand in a specific spot. He would, like, visually point at her, you stand here, you know? But then when things weren't going right in the ring, he would jump out, She'd be standing where he told her to stand, but he was mad that she was standing there and he would make her stand in a new spot as if like, dude, you told her to stand there. What a <laughs> dick. Yeah. Well, well, you're like, you're like the worst person in the world. Like, uh, like little things like that, that made you hate him. And it wasn't because of what was happening in the ring. It was because of what was happening outside the ring. And uh, man, yeah, I just, I missed the opportunity to talk to him. Well, look, I know you're beating yourself up about this, but I am. Not there's not too many other people in the world, whether their profession is wrestler or otherwise, who can say they've had any sort of phone call with the macho man, Randy Savage. So I think that that's like a badge of honor you should be wearing. It, it is. And uh, later on in life, someone explained it like this. Think about all the people who get into basketball. Let's just say because of who got into basketball a long time ago because of Michael Jordan, let's say. Sure. Okay, what are the odds of them becoming a successful basketball player? So slim to none. And then put on top of that, the odds of them getting to work with Michael Jordan, the person who helped shape their love. for Like, it's like capturing lightning in a bottle. He's, they said, you've captured lightning in a bottle. You've got to be okay with that. And uh, yeah, I am. Hey, it's Chris, and thank you so much for checking out this video on my brand new YouTube channel, CVV Clips. As the name suggests, it's a place where I'm gonna post clips from some of my favorite interviews. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit subscribe and also check out these videos right here. YouTube thinks you might like them.